All right. All right. Well, here we yeah. are. Yeah. Hi. What's up, guys? Yeah. It's been a little what? Well, while. welcome to Here's the Deal. I'm Chez. I'm Sarah. And a lot to talk about. You know, we're so sorry for taking so much time off. Yeah, it's, been, it's been two weeks. I haven't Sarah, seen you much. I know. You've been on, you were on vacation for a little bit. I much went to needed. How Very was good it? A friend of mine got married and uh, had a blast. Yeah. It was a great time. Uh, I'd never seen the Caribbean Sea, so it was gorgeous and beautiful, and I highly recommend do you think uh, you think you got any darker? You got a little. I got color? a little bit. I mean, I I still underst- look a little pale. I understand that I'm white, <laughs> and I believe that skin cancer is a real thing. So I try to stay about my normal color. So do you like do any preventative care, like wearing a straw hat, or no? There's just uh, a lot of sunscreen. fedora. A lo- I should wear a fedora. Hats <laughs> don't look good on me. Really? I have too small of a head. Okay. Like if you were, if I were to put that on right now, it would be three sizes too big, and it wouldn't look good. Okay. It's not so. Hats, you know, you know yourself. I, I know my head, mm-hmm. and hats don't work, but plenty of sunscreen. I can kind of go SPF fifty on it. So. Okay. Yeah. So, but no, it was a great time. I got burnt a little bit, but that's. I was okay. slightly jealous of your of your photos. Yeah. Well, I was slightly jealous of you. Mm-hmm. Not really, but yeah, I it, know you weren't. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I'd throw that out there for the softball people, but Women's College World Series again. Oh, yeah. Um, their year two with Flo. Yeah, you know, um, I kind of had a, a World Series hangover. I don't know about you guys who are either watching uh, pretty much a World Series marathon going on, yeah. but I was pretty wiped. Brittany, were you wiped? Um, I think I'm still wiped. To yeah. be honest, it was crazy. Yeah, but in an incredible historic World Series, we missed you out there. Yeah, I missed it too. Mm-hmm. I was I, I was trying to watch. It's crazy, though, the, the, how much the sport has grown, like, looking out into the crowd, like, it still gives me chills. <clears throat> because, uh, you know, as you know, I've, I've been in the World Series three times now. Uh, and to see the stands filled up, to, st- to see the additional stands that have been built in the outfield, it's just incredible. And the, the coverage was phenomenal. Um, the competition... Like, it was everything that we had hoped for. Um, it was pretty special. I mean, it's special every year, but yeah. I, I broke down and bought a shirt. Yeah. Because well, we, you I, know I'm not really one for, like, memorabilia. We bought shirts last year, too, didn't we? I bought a hat. Okay. you got. I definitely got a shirt last year. I was like, this is too cool. I yeah, they ran out of hats. I should have worn the shirt today. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which doing. shirt did you buy? Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, it's gray. <laughs> it's a dry fit. Ooh, and it oh, has all of the teams on it. Nice. It was pretty much slim pickings because I waited to the last day. I'm surprised they even had any T-shirts mm-hmm. left the last day. You know what What I would like to see? You know, the people working in, like, those T-shirt booths, they should have a TV there where mm-hmm. the games. True story. You know what I mean? They're not even able to watch? No. That's not cool. Right? They need, they need a TV in there. Yeah. Just. I agree. You know, hook some people up. I agree. But we'll see. Uh, it's definitely growing. But, you know, today's show, we're going to recap a little bit of the World Series, a lot of it, uh, the championship game. And then we're going to get into the controversial calls that were made during the World Series. We're so excited to get yeah. into Yeah, I mean, we're, Sarah calls. and I were even going, we're already going back and forth on, on the topic. Yes, so. before we went live, there was a lengthy discussion about controversial calls and and how we feel about them, so... Just stay, just stay with us because it's coming. So obviously, Oklahoma repeats. Back to, I just want to say that I've been on the Boomer Sooner train. <laughs> Get out of here! <laughs> I was on the Boomer Sooner train last year when nobody, when they weren't even on the radar. I stayed. I just rode that train all the way back to OKC this year. We and, know um, we've heard and all I was about on it. The Boomer Sooner train again this year. Get Chez doesn't like to admit that I was right, but that's fine. Look, uh, <laughs> we both in the preseason rankings, we had them at number one. We there sure was did. an argument. We sure did. There was no argument there. We they sure were did. returning virtually everybody, and then they added two more dominant pitchers. I like, think you doubted during the season, though. I did. I and did. so did you. And my doubt never Come waited. on. <laughs> Get out of here. I have a certain message from Sarah that I'm no, not supposed to don't share. Don't worry about it. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, OU repeated. 
Yes. Um, back to back. Uh, game one, I feel like we need to talk about. Yeah, absolutely. OU versus Florida. Historic game. Kick us off on that one. Okay. Many of you already know, but 17 innings, 5 hours and 28 minutes. OU wins 7-5. to five. There was 132 plate appearances, 496 pitches thrown. Barnhill, uh, player of the year, and Gorley combined for 26 strikeouts in the game, while Lowry and Parker for OU combined for 14. OU had three home runs mm -hmm. in that game. I mean, it was just... It was... It every, was unbelievable. You know... You have to give it up for Florida. I mean, we had our doubts about them offensively, mm -hmm. but in like the first, you, the first games until the championship series, they outscored their opponents twenty to two. Twenty yeah. to two. They came to play. I mean, I, I think, I think I said this kind of all season. Like Florida was not going to make the same mistake that they made last year, um, which was they had this great season and then they didn't did. Did you make say it. that? I. I think you're... I believe I said the I phrase... I oh, backtracking. Um, <laughs> not backtracking. Um, so, you know, I, I don't know that I expected them to get to the championship game, but, I mean, they played some really good softball mm -hmm. um, during the Women's College World Series. Um, so it, it, was, it, was, it was unbelievable. Because Florida was down 2-1 to one in the bottom of the seventh. Correct. Right? They, scored, they scored one. And then it's two to two for a while going into extras. And then OU scores two. And then, lo and behold, Florida comes back at the bottom of the inning and scores two more. And then it goes on for a couple more innings. And, you know, and then Knighton hits the three run bomb, which is difficult to come back from. But Florida still managed to get another run out of it. So it went from being like a two to one game to seven to five. It, you know, it, it was crazy. It was, it was unbelievable. I couldn't believe that I would have, I couldn't believe what I was watching. I really couldn't. It was a Shay Knighton show. It sh <laughs> Shay it Knighton is for real. Yeah. Like, she did it last year, too. And not to mention uh, Kaylee Clifton, mm -hmm. too. A, a, just a great World Series. Yeah. Folly of You. I yeah. mean, the list goes on and on when you talk about the uh, OU lineup. Like, that's a very dangerous lineup to throw to. And they're sophomores. Like, this is, we talked about this last year when they won with most of their team being freshmen or underclassmen. You know, that class is now sophomores, but they got, they got two more years left, folks. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's, it's kind of scary. It, it's kind of scary. I, I definitely... You know what? What's the stat? Nobody's three-peated since they since the th best of three series was initiated. Is that correct? Nobody's three-peated since like 1990. Something UCLA like that. UCLA did it. Um, the w the about like the little wheel thing is still pending in my mind. Yeah, that's okay. So I think I got it. I think I'm close enough for, for everybody. Uh, I don't think anybody has three-peated since um, the best of three series was started. UCLA was the last oh, one okay. to do it. Um, so you're talking about a legitimate chance at a three-peat. Mm -hmm. um, they're that dangerous, in my yep. opinion. They will be just as dangerous, like, next season. So I'll be, I'll be riding the boomer sooner, too. Yeah, like, I can see that. You know, Patty... Patty knows what she's doing. So, so Patty, in the press conference, she grabbed me and she's like, I told you! <laughs> Did she really? <laughs> oh, that's great. You know, I... I turned it around and I said, you know, my my uh, smack talking is just only motivation for the OU yeah, Sooners. Yeah, exactly. exactly. But they're f they are for real. And you know what? Patty Gasso, I have so much respect for that, mm -hmm. for that woman. Agreed. That coach, um, she is, she finds a way to mold these uh, young players into strong women that know how to go out and compete on the field and out in the world and just i'm i'm in awe of what she's accomplished in her softball car career and what she continues to do it's yeah i can't amazing. i can't say anything i can't follow that up with anything better I, i'm just <laughs> gonna agree with Chez. yeah uh another you know a spotlight performer nicole mendez mm -hmm. a freshman she was uh top 10 you think maybe even top five in our Hot 100, mm -hmm. 
but spectacular performance under she pressure sure leading did. off leading off in the world series you know as a freshman and then even had the opportunity to pitch in mm -hmm. in game two let's get into game two a little bit uh alicia casio starts for florida and some people would question uh that move i wouldn't i don't alicia casio has world series experience mm -hmm. she's pitched in those in those big games not to mention she's still top 10 in era yeah any three of those florida pitchers if they were like the ace on any other team would get a start in the women's college world series without a doubt so i don't question that i don't question that at all especially when barnhill and gorley threw the five and a half hour game the night before that's kind of a no-brainer to me mm -hmm. you know Paige parker gets the start which you know we're of not course. all that surprised no. But the fact that Patty Gasso goes to all four pitchers mm -hmm. in this game was the amount of confidence that she has in her players and her players in her is just through the roof. And um, just shows her, her level of coaching. Like she knows who to go to when, uh, you know, she used, she has four pitchers and she used them all. Like, she, yeah. and she knows when, to, when they need to be used. And, and, and we saw some of that tactic play out in the first round of regionals mm -hmm. where we're just like holy cow nicole mendez is coming in from right field yeah like there was just like this whole shuffle I, I was i couldn't even keep up with the amount of uh changes going on in the game but somehow it, it works in their favor which is completely different i might add which is completely different to last year mm -hmm. and how she coached because she only had Paige parker and yeah. Paige parker through every single game in regional super regionals in the women's college world series so it just goes to show the kind of coach that patty gasso is she's very flexible she knows her team she can ride a pitch she knows when to like ride a pitcher all the way through she knows how to shuffle her team you know to use the resources that she now has so i yeah patty well done get out of here get out of here um but you know let's talk also about florida a little bit um you know, I, I wasn't expecting OU to beat them two and out. You know, I thought they I thought it was going to go to a game three, um, but props to Florida. Yeah, you know? and you know, it looked to be that way when we saw the game initially start. We're like, uh oh, here it goes again. You know, Mendez leads off with the home run, and then uh, Reynoso comes back in the next inning and hits another home run. It's like they kept one upping yep. each other, like one upping each other every inning which is why all of us were glued to the game because yeah. it's like what are they going to do next like there's going to be some type of response and unfortunately they fell short uh by one run mm -hmm. but you have to be proud of the way that florida gators team fought i was certainly impressed yeah with with how they played um but i think just offensively it Offensively, Oklahoma is stacked. Mm -hmm. They are so stacked. Even they took their strikeouts in game one, and it didn't even phase them. No. They were still hitting them out. And it's not it going to matter. It's not going to change next year either. Like it's going to be largely the same offense coming back at you next yeah, year. Yeah, and I and I hope we're talking about Shea Knighton being Player of the Year. Yeah, because I, I mean, let's let's. Uh, talk about this stat here in 11 games at the women's college world series knighton has recorded 16 rbis she hit 389 with three home runs yeah that's bananas she's a sophomore she's a sophomore folks sophomore yeah definitely definitely you know she has another season like she's had her freshman and sophomore year I, she's definitely gonna be talked about player of the year next year definitely mm -hmm. gonna be in the conversation if it, if it continues i think what's interesting is like we we saw oklahoma hit their their rough patches but they still finished the season with 61 r wins mm -hmm. and that's more than they had last year and the last time that uh they had that that amount of wins it was in back in 2000 yeah, which is crazy. Yeah. And they they were ranked number 10 going going into the Women's College World Series, and that's the kind of season they ended up mm -hmm. having. Um, I mean, we we see number 10, but we both know that we, they're not a number 10 team. Yeah. They just they just had some bad losses during the season, but yeah, they They're not they're, a number. They're not. They're not. No yeah. way. No chance. 
Um, so with the, the win, the Sooners rank third in NCAA history with four national titles. Only UCLA, who has 11, uh, Arizona with eight, uh, have more championships than the Sooners. So it's kind of a... I don't know. It's, you know, we talk about the SEC and, and their dominance, but when you look at overall all-time titles, it's Pac-12 and now a Big 12 team. It's interesting. Um, it's awesome. <laughs> yeah, it is. Uh, it's inter- I think it just shows goes to show you know how softball has grown from the West Coast, and now it's it's the whole country, and you got to deal with all these conferences. No conference is a lock to win. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, uh, but uh, we're gonna. I mean, we're, we, we're, we're going to get into this on the Hot 100 show, which uh, we won't have this week, but we'll have it the following week. It's just the recruiting that Oklahoma has done. It's crazy. It's crazy. They, at, a, at a point in time, they had the number one player for 2017, 2018, 2019, and 2020 in our rankings. They had the number one player. Like, yeah. it's just, and now they have 2018, 2019, 2020, mm-hmm. and 2021. Yeah. It's unbelievable. Whoa, that's a lot. Yeah, plenty. Yeah, go big or go home. Yeah, so I have a feeling the four is going to become six or so in the next couple of years. Uh, They're they're definitely not done winning Mm -hmm. championships with this current team, and then the recruiting classes that they're bringing Mm -hmm. in. So, dynasty. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oklahoma is only the fourth team to repeat as national championships, as national champions. Mm -hmm. Arizona, Florida, and UCLA did it. Uh, and back in 2015, we were talking about, oh, is Florida going to three-peat? Is Florida going to three-peat? Um, it's hard. It's you very know, hard. You know, the OU dealt with the struggles um, that they had to go through as far as, like, leadership goes and who they were as a team. Mm-hmm. You know, they, they had uh, some key leaders uh, from that senior class, and, you know, trying to form a new identity is not always the easiest thing, but they found a way. And I think, I don't know, I only see them rolling from, mm-hmm. from here on out. I agree. All right. But let's get into, like, some we're, real topics. We're Are talking ready for this? We're talking controversial calls. <laughs> let's go. Um, all right. Chaz, kick us off here. All right. First one we're going to talk about. Uh, obviously, y'all know this. Game one between UCLA and LSU. The play at the plate between uh, Paige Halstead and Constance Quinn at the plate. Um, it was ruled obstruction, but we're going to take another look and we're going to discuss. Do we have it? Brittany, yep, do you have the cue? Got up? it. Here All we right. Go. We're taking a look here. All right. So that play was <laughs> ruled obstruction mm-hmm. and arguably changed the outcome of the game sure did right because lsu if they don't rule it obstruction uh, the ru- the run never scores yep um but i can't help so there's some vagueness around uh the the act of catching the ball the act of receiving the ball and yeah. the obstruction rule why don't you read 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 for our viewers the the verbatim the obstruction rule, and we can all agree that it's vague. Okay. The act of a defensive team member that hinders or impedes a batter's attempt to make contact with the pitch or that impedes the progress of a runner who is legally running the bases, unless the fielder is in possession of the, of the ball, is is fielding a batted ball or is in the act of catching a thrown ball, the act may be intentional or intentional and applies to a live ball action only. Okay, there's two ways that I look at this, right? Um, Does the ball beat her? Mm -hmm. Yes, it does. Was Paige Halstead sitting on the plate before she received the ball? Yes, she was. Um, I think in that situation, I'm going to make a judgment call as an umpire Mm -hmm. and and it's a no call. The ball flat out beats her. Yeah, by, by I, several feet. Like, she was several feet up the baseline. And I understand the, the umpire has a job to uphold the rules, but it's still subjective when you talk about the act of, like, receiving a ball. Mm-hmm. What does that actually mean? Um, in, in baseball, the catcher's feet, they're in fair territory. And then... When the ball is received, then the catcher moves into the runner's lane. Mm-hmm. 
You know, there's you get into some muckiness when as you're receiving, you're running, you're moving into the runner's lane. Yeah. I think it should just be a no call. Yeah. Yeah. In this particular instance. Yeah, I, I agree with Chaz. I don't think obstruction shouldn't have been should have been called. I do think I do not think these rules are black and white. I think there is a gray area. And I think where where you were mentioning, like the umpire has to make a judgment call. I think that's exactly what should have happened here. The larger discussion that can be had about obstruction is, is it specific enough? Is it, you know, is it the right rule to have? You know, like you mentioned in baseball, it's very specific. Like the catcher's feet are in fair territory until the ball is received and then they can move in, in front of the plate. I personally think that is a much clearer interpretation of obstruction. Sure, there's still gray, gray area and like when exactly do you receive it and where, you know, where, but I think, I think that is much clearer. And as a catcher, <laughs> um, I think there should be I, I, I think there should be some blocking of the plate allowed. Uh, I, I, that play makes me angry that that was called obstruction. That was a great play by the catcher as far as I'm concerned. Um, I think there should be, you know, there's obviously people getting mowed over in baseball and everything. I don't know that I want that to happen and girls getting injured, but like I want some more exciting plays to the plate. I want the catcher to be more involved. Um, so is, was that obstruction as far as I'm concerned? No, that was a terrible call. Um, I just, I'd like to see some more excitement there and a clearer rule on obstruction. Brittany? Yep. Tell us what you guys think. Yeah, I think for me, same thing. The rule needs to be clear. Um, Katie Mack has also left a comment on Facebook and brings up another good point about these plays. What do you guys think about players diving headfirst into home? Katie, I am so glad you were, you, we we're like right here. <laughs> we're right here. Okay? It's been bothering us. Be this has been bothering me for quite some time. We talked about it a little bit before the show. Take it, Chez. This, <sighs> is, this is you. You take it. Here's the deal. <laughs> Stop doing it. Stop diving headfirst at home. Unless... You you would like a spinal injury or a concussion. Like, just stop doing it. Why are you doing it? Why? Do you understand you don't have pads on? Like, Someone answer Chez right now. Why are you doing you it? You are not wearing a football helmet that is designed for uh, impact. Mm -hmm. Like, stop doing it. It's a poor life choice. Really, I mean, you can. A pro -life it's a choice. poor. It's a poor life choice. It's a poor life choice. I thought like, you said pro life. No, <laughs> I mean it could be. We're not going there though. It's it's a uh, it is a poor life choice. Yep. Uh, for all the reasons Chess said, injury like good grief, injury potential. Like you can make a hook slide, mm -hmm. going feet first, reach around with your hand. Like it. Don't stop, stop. doing it. Be. Stop. That's how it should Just be. stop. Stop yeah. doing Richard it. Richard says that it's crazy. There you go. A catcher in full gear is going to win. Yeah. <laughs> Every time. <laughs> I, would, I would wholeheartedly agree with you. Stop diving headfirst into home. And Cut this, it out. This transitions. It's dumb. This transitions into our next controversial call. Uh, Hold on real quick. Jeff is appreciating you going beast mode, Chez. Beast mode. It's ridiculous. It's Kids are watching idea. this. It's not a good idea. They're Stop doing it. this. And then have we, have we not seen enough injuries to mm -hmm. be like, okay, I, I don't think I should be doing that. Yep. Like, holy cow. Diving headfirst into a base is a lot different than diving headfirst yeah, into a base. Yeah, but even, with armor I mean, yeah. even like, diving headfirst in a second is, has its, its implications. Dangerous. We Talk saw Demi Turner, mm -hmm. like, dislocate her elbow, I believe, mm -hmm. diving into second base in the LSU game. And, you know, I've had teammates, like, have season-ending season injuries doing that. Mm -hmm. Cut it out. Stop it. Chez, you, you know what Chez I'm seeing will go now? Beast mode on you. And I'm, like, seeing it at the club level. They either dive headfirst into home or they run home and don't slide and should be sliding. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, Flip what are catcher. you doing? <laughs> you know, a ball gets by the catcher and they just, like, run home and the ball's being thrown. Right. Slide. 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 When in doubt, slide. If there's it's doubt, it's ridiculous. There be doubt, but anyway, so we're getting into our next it's transitions. Yeah, yeah. This is a good segue uh, because we're talking about the play at the plate um, versus A and M, A and M's Ashley Walters versus UCLA's uh, Gabby Maurice, and then the 
um, hashtag free Lisa. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah. That we'll discuss as well. Um, Chez, tell us about this. You know, I, I do, I do believe it's obstruction. And here's why, because it is an errant throw, mm-hmm. but it completely takes Ashley Walters into the runner's lane. Mm-hmm. And then Maurice has nowhere to go. Yep. Now, should she be diving home? No. You shouldn't be head diving first. home. You should not be diving head first. Not head first home. No. No. Just and and obviously when you get hit like that, it's gonna evoke some emotion. Yeah. Like, you know, it's about to be a girl fight. Mm-hmm. But you know, that you you take your chances there. I do think they should have rolled obstruction on that just because um she did move into the runner's lane, which mm-hmm. obstructed and impeded her path mm-hmm. to home. And way- that's when we saw Lisa erupt because that that call was blatant. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, as as written, that is obstruction, as far as I'm concerned. Do I think that that should constitute obstruction? No, I don't. Because as a catcher, like, if there's an errant throw... You better believe I'm going after the ball. Yes, like I'm not absolutely. thinking about oh, yeah, is this going to be obstruction? Right like, yeah. And I'm a little, I'm just a little liberal on what I believe should be obstruction. But as the rules written, yes, that should that should have been obstruction. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the girl got tagged in the head. That happens. That's especially what happens when you dive, when you head, dive first. head first. I, but I don't think that's what I don't think that's what what Lisa was upset about. I, I think she was upset this about is compounded the, problem, the um, right? Because should, the pre- the day before obstruction. Mm-hmm. And then similar call, but a little bit more obvious, not called. And one of her her players is injured in the process. Mm -hmm. I think things kind of boiled over at that point. Yeah, I was surprised to see how many people were upset with Lisa's reaction. Um, I I kind of saw the comments coming in on Facebook or coming in on social. What's your take, you know, on the reaction? Uh, we we've had similar conversations about this. I don't think you judge somebody based on like that one altercation. Mm-hmm. Is like Lisa doing that every other weekend? That's the first like actual reaction yeah. that I've seen from Lisa ever yeah. like that. And um, was it right? You know, I'm not I'm not going to be the one to to argue right or wrong. She may have tripped, which uh, resulted in her looking like she kind of chest bumped. Right. Uh, the umpire, and she did get it in her face. I think it's interesting dynamic when you know we're so accustomed to seeing male coaches mm-hmm. have that similar altercation, but like kick dirt, yeah, on an umpire and like shouting at him like right in their face. But like once we've seen a woman do it, it's kind of foreign. Mm-hmm. It's like oh my gosh, oh dear, you know. Yeah, and I nobody was hurt in the process. Mm-hmm. She got tossed. And, you know, she was, she had her, she had her players back and she had her teams back. I'm yeah. not, I, it's hard for me to argue right or wrong. It's a, it's those moments where it's just, you're so overcome with emotion, like this happens. And is it, can I be in control of that all the time? And the answer is no, we're human beings and we don't have control of it all the time. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know, I think that's, I think that's very well said. I don't think that, I don't think there even is a discussion of whether it was right or wrong. I think it was like it was an instance that happened. Yeah. And I as a player, I would be super pumped that my coach like gets up there and like defends me. Like, you know, I you know, it's it, she obviously took it to a level where the um felt like she need they needed to eject her, which is one thing, but you know, and the whole trip thing, we're not getting into that. But uh I would have been pumped if I would have been an else UCLA player and like see her take him, you know, stand up for us and you know, so hashtag free Lisa. Yeah, I think what'll be interesting is that when UCLA starts their season next year, she <laughs> she's still suspended. Yeah, because she's suspended two For, more, two no, more, just one just more game. One, just one, one more game. game. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. Another play at the plate. Oh, you. Folly of you. As far as I'm concerned, she was feet outside of the baseline. Yeah. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what the ump was looking at. Uh, I don't know. Do we have that? No, I can't find we, it, guys. We don't have it, but uh, like several feet out of the baseline, as far as I'm concerned. She's like basically at the pitcher's mound, right? Right. <laughs> so this <laughs> like was really? uh, pretty much the uh, the Washington Oklahoma game. Uh huh. 
and uh, play at the plate. Fale of you pulls the juke move. <laughs> Which was on, pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it was a straight up. She broke. If she had a basketball right. in her hand, <laughs> she would. That was like a. That would be equal to a, a killer crossover. Yeah. And then Morgan Flores, like her ankles got broke. Yeah. I completely <laughs> hand, you know, high five Valley of you on was, the attempt. But she was she, out of the base path. She was path. clearly out of the base path. <laughs> super impressed with the attempt. Yeah. But not super impressed with the call that came from the yeah. the umps. I, you think he might have been a little surprised that that actually happened. I, I don't know what... I don't know what he was thinking, but yeah. it was it was not even close. Fale of you with the juke move. Yeah, I like we like it, Fale. We yeah. like the effort. Yeah, I like the agility. It's pretty sweet. But you know we're running out of time here. We got two more. Okay, we can go through. We're gonna go. We're gonna go. All right, real here quick. We go. Two more. Leah Wodak bunt in Oregon game. I've got this. That was one. foul and snowballed into a rally inning for the the Sooners. So cue that real quick. Cool. Here we go. Lays down the bunt. Calls it fair, a little miss throw. And this is how, that's pretty much how the uh, the rally got started for OU. Mm -hmm. But it was foul. Clearly. Straight up foul. C clearly foul. It was in. It was in the. I mean, it was in the batter's box. Like it was foul in the bat. Like it was. You know, I think there's problems if you go back to that clip, and the umpire was so close to the catcher Gwen Savekis mm -hmm. that I don't know if he had a clear view. Yeah. I I feel like he was making that call. Uh, he was looking at the call of whether the ball, the bat, hit the ball, mm -hmm. versus whether it, it was, was fair, fair or foul. <laughs> Yeah, y yeah. You know, I, I that, that was huge. Yeah, huge error. And and it's the bottom of the fifth. It's two nothing. And you could make the case that you know, obviously, a whole host of things happen in a game. But that was a momentum changer. That Absolutely, definitely changed the that, course that of that was, game. That came right after Oregon went up two nothing. Mm -hmm. Yep, it's foul. It is. Call it foul. It's foul. It's this foul. is the it's a freaking World Series, and then to add to that, and we've all discussed this, instant replay needs to be implemented yes, in the does. women's college World Series next year. Baseball has it for college; mm -hmm. they have it for the World Series, like in, in baseball. It just needs it needs to be implemented. No, no, with the with the amount of controversial calls, this is sorely needed. Mm -hmm. I don't have anything else to say. I agree with that. Um, Word. All right. We got anything else? You want to talk about pitching? I mean, do you want to get into that? We're going to go real quick. We're okay. going to go fast. Pitching. Yep. Tell so, us. So we saw in the last press conference, Oregon head coach Mike White, um, you know, talk about how there needs to be more clarification on pitching rules. Mm hmm. And, you know, I, I'm going to assume that Mike White was talking about Kelly Barnhill pitching illegally. Mm -hmm. And the fact is, she does crow hop and she does replant. There's really, if, you, if we're going by the rules, mm -hmm. she is pitching illegally. Now, was she called for it? No. Do I think that that gives her a significant advantage in pitching? I don't believe it no. does. But if you're going to put these rules in place, you have to uphold them. Why do you think they're not getting – why do you think that's not getting enforced? I have, I have ideas. Chess has I'm ideas. I'm not going to share them with you guys. She'll share them with me after we're yes, done. Yes, I will. But you guys I do. I do have my, my own ideas about what's going on here. But, uh, I mean, Mike White has a point. He needs to know what to tell his pitchers. Mm -hmm. That are coming in, what's legal and what's 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 illegal, mm -hmm. and nothing's going to stray from the fact that she put up the numbers like she did. But I mean, if we're talking about pitching legally, she's not. Yeah, it's just that's a fact. Yeah, I mean, so. we could, there's literally thousands of clips we can roll where you can see it every single time, and it's not called for some reason. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I I. 
I'm not in those discussions with the umpires as far as enforcing that rule. But I'm sure that's something that's talked about. All right. Here's the deal. Vague obstruction rule. <laughs> Vague pitching rules. Yes. We need instant replay. Yes. That's the deal. Yes, that is. That's that the, deal. Is the deal. Cool. Well, thanks for joining us. And hey, if if I saw you at the Women's College World Series, thanks for coming up to me. You know, it's really nice to to meet some of you who who watch our show. Um, we love what we do, and we'll be here next week. Um, we're going to discuss next week the incoming classes from some of these for these top programs and who you need to watch um, because it's going to be an in- another interesting year mm-hmm. uh, next year with uh, with softball. So yeah, we'll see. That's the That's deal. The deal.